Hey guys, so I'm going to be showing you how to use Raphael JS, which as you can see on this front page is just a small JavaScript library that simplifies work with vector graphics, things like SVGs and stuff that has paths that makes it easier to translate and rotate things and all that kind of stuff. Um, so you can do some pretty cool stuff with it. It's mostly used for like data visualization. Um, they give some examples on the home page. There's some pretty cool stuff that helps you see the different data of things. Um, you can see that like here this is this clock that's pretty sweet changes colors and stuff depending on the minute so there's all these cool things that you can do with it we're not going to do anything that advanced today we'll be doing things more like this with animations um, but yeah let's get started so I'm going to provide the link that you can clone through github to get some file stubs um, so that you can get started a little bit quicker but once you get those, it's just going to look something like this. So we have an index, and then a CSS, and then a uh, JS, JavaScript file. So as you can see, we have to load the Raphael first. So you're going to have to download that, and you can just get that from the main page of Raphael. So just right-click it, and then save link as. If you want to save it in your JavaScript folder, um, so you can see I've done that there. So just say, be sure it's in that folder so that it refers to the right thing, because here I have the JS raw file. Or you can change this if you put it in a different spot, so whatever you need to do. Just be sure that that is the right source, and then you're also going to want to load your own script. And so that's where we're going to be doing all the work is in this JavaScript file. And so we, you can see we have the use strict, which just catches the errors, and then the onload, which um, makes sure everything loads as soon as the, um, or before we start doing this raw file stuff. All right. Getting started, we'll just want to declare a new object, so let's call it P for the sake of simplicity. You just type in Raphael, and then what you could do is give it your own size, like you would a canvas. You could put your own numbers in, but what's more helpful is to use the ID. So whatever you gave your your div or whatever tag you're using, um, so like here it's main. So we can call it, we can actually call the ID through the Raphael thing. And so in the CSS, I gave it a size so that it's actually big enough. Um, so we're just going to refer to this as main. And so it's going to put all the raw file stuff in that div. Cool. So let's make a circle. So we'll do p.circle. And we'll put it at 800, 190, and make the radius 40. So the 800 is the x value, the 190 is the y value, and the 40 is the radius. And so that's going to give us a little circle. So let's check it out. Go to our test. And boom, we got a circle right where we wanted it. Cool. And so let's, here, let's name this. We'll call it a new circle. And then what we can do is we can fill it with red if we want. And so this is just one of the Raphael functions and so I'm going to be doing all these if you want to look at them more specifically you can go to their documentation and so it has all the things on here and so to get to the documentation just you just go from the main page hit documentation and everything's here so like this is the one we're using now um, and so you have all these things that you can do but if you want to look more specifically at these then you can go to this page and, and check out what parameters it takes and stuff so for this we're just going to do we're going to fill it with red oh now it circles red Pretty sweet. Cool. So that's pretty easy. Let's make another circle, but let's do some cooler stuff with it. So we'll put this one at 320, 240, and then give it a radius of 60. And then one thing you can do with uh, Raphael that's used a lot is animate. And so we can actually put the attributes within this animate and give it whatever stuff you want. And you can change these colors. Um, if you want to on your own, but these are the ones that I'm going to use. And so we'll give it stroke width. The stroke is just the outline. Stroke width um, is how how thick the stroke is. So let's do 80. And then let's give it an opacity too of 0 0.5. Cool. And then we'll animate this over two seconds. So let's see what that does for us. Yeah, check that out. That's pretty sweet, huh? Cool. And so there's some other functions that we can do with that. So right now it just does that on the load of the page, which is pretty cool. But there's even more that we can do. 
with Raphael. Doesn't stop there, guys. So let's add a hover so that when we mouse over the circle, it does something. And this actually takes in two functions. So for when you hover on and then hover off. So this will be the first one. And we'll refer to this. It's just this circle. Animate. And let's change the attributes. That'd be kind of cool, right? We'll fill it with dark cyan. Change the stroke color. Change the stroke width. Change the opacity. Just because we can. And let's have this happen over one second. And then another thing you can do with animate is give it like this other attribute. So elastic makes it kind of like bounce down. You'll see it. Um, okay, let's add this second function. I'm just going to copy and paste it because it's just going to change the attributes again. I don't need to type those out. Um, so that's so our first one is hover in and then hover out. Let's test it out. It does our cool little thing. We're going to do a little elastic bounce in there. And then when we hover out, it changes colors again to our second function. So that's kind of a cool thing you can do. All right, enough with circles, though. Let's make some, or at least one, rectangle. It's going to be the same thing. So we can just put it in a variable. Let's call it new rect. And then we'll have it equal p.rect. And then we'll give it its size slash um, coordinates and there it is okay let's see where this rectangle shows up so it's right there cool so we got our rectangle and instead of doing fills I'm going to show you guys some transformations so let's animate it so that we can see it transform tell it what's transform so the capital T is just translation so it moves it uh, by its XY coordinates so let's do let's move it 100 uh, to the right and then we won't move it at all on the Y axis and then you can also do rotation so do R 90 degrees so let's check that out Okay, something went wrong there. Let's see what I did. Transform T100 0 R90. Oh, we didn't give it any seconds. So it did it too fast. See, so making mistakes everywhere. Alright, let's do it over two seconds so we can watch it happen too. And there it goes. It's pretty cool. Okay, so we got our translations and stuff. Uh, let's do let's do a, a mouse over on our new circle. There we made our new circle up here. It's the, the red one that's just hanging out on the side over there. So let's do a mouse over. And you can have it so that it affects other objects. So we're going to do a mouse over. And we're going to have a function that changes our rectangle. Because why not? And so I'm just going to copy and paste the animate fill stuff because we've been doing that a bunch and there's no reason to type it out again and well we have some different colors and stuff in here but that's fine so now when we mouse over our red circle over here check this out guys Ooh. get some properties assigned to it so it's pretty cool too all right let's do one last thing real quick and then finish up uh, let's add a click function to our other circle over here. Actually, let's add it to the. Let's add it to this one. And put a function in here, and let's have it. Let's have it animate itself because it's just look at it's all by itself right now. We want it to look all cool with the borders and stuff. So let's do that. I'm gonna copy and paste that. We can give it a different timing if we want. Do this this dot animate. 
Cool, that looks good. Alright, let's try it out, see if it works. Got our mouse over, and then let's click. Boom! Now nah, you're cool too. So then we got a little family of circles and rectangles, and life is good. So that is basically Raphael JS. Obviously, you can do a lot more things. As you can see on this homepage, it does uh, does other stuff that's like pretty cool. I mean, check this tiger out. That's all just like through vector graphics, I think. So I mean, you can do some pretty crazy stuff with Raphael JS. But as far as animations and things go. Um, this is how you do it. You can do some transformations like we saw. And yeah, it's a, it's a fun thing to get to know. So that's it. Thanks, guys.